podcast featuring the daily excellence of insightful discussion decoding spiritual experiences, episode number 44, where we're joined by Mike from COT. We're privileged to have access to the teachings and insights of Michael from Council of Time, a highly esteemed Christian apologist of our time. To delve deeper into Michael's enlightening teachings, visit the official Council of Time website provided in the description. Join the COT community dedicated to spreading the message of God's word in these end generation times. Your support is invaluable in advancing their mission and exploring the transformative power of a close relationship with the Most High. Don't miss out. Explore today. Now, before we begin today's rebroadcast of Insightful Discussion Decoding Spiritual Experiences, podcast episode number 44, I'd like to extend our heartfelt appreciation for your unwavering support. As we consistently share these Council of Time rebroadcast podcasts, we're also embarking on new avenues to enhance our community, including setting up a Patreon page and exploring merchandise and access options. Our aim is to cover the costs associated with running a full-time YouTube channel, as we've recently been denied monetization despite meeting all of YouTube's requirements. Nevertheless, we remain committed to keeping this podcast commercial-free. Your continued support enables us to spread God's holy word worldwide. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and message us for daily excellence in your life. Stay tuned for today's insightful discussion, Decoding Spiritual Experiences, Broadcast podcast number 44 here on End Generation Project. Peace and blessings to you all. Good afternoon, everybody out there. First of all, this is going to be short. Very, very short. Very short. But it's good to see you guys. All right. And you guys know our discussion yesterday. Did you guys come up with any answer about the posting? have a page, our financial page for COT. If you guys would, with the admins, right? Admins, you guys around. I want you guys to get a general sense of what the people have decided. Can you do that? Based on your collection of yeses or no's. I'm going to go forward. Okay. I'm going to go forward. The page is done. We could post it right now, but I'm going to let you guys do this, okay? I'm going to help you guys out, too. I'm going to post both your COT email accounts on one of the on Sunday's uh, schedule page, and that way folks can email you concerning their specific answer, right? We will have a polling page uh, coming up also. And any future decisions we'll have like that. Um, you guys can go ahead and, you know, we'll pull the answer to that, okay? But I, it'd be good if those decisions are made by all of us, not just a couple of us, okay? That, that decision. Some decisions I'll have to do because it was given to me, but the majority of them, that's going to be up to all of us, all right? That'll be up to all of us. So all of you guys will be included, all right? All of you guys will. Okay, with it, with, uh, and that's that. Yeah, I got you covered. I'll go through that process. When you guys see the emails post in um, Sunday's schedule box, email your answers to those two emails, okay? When do you guys see that? And then we'll go from there. I'll be posting those uh, tonight, those two emails tonight in the schedule box. And for the admins, I'll send you guys a, a quick email to, so you can set that up in your Outlook or you can set that up in your uh, something on Windows or something with Gmail or, you know, of that nature so that you know how to work that pop address. Okay. The schedule box, yes, for Sunday, uh, the broadcast schedule. On the homepage, right-hand side, broadcast schedule. In Sunday's slot, I'm going to post those two emails. Okay? I'll do that sometime tonight. And you guys can send that in there. All right? All right. Somebody says, Northern Above Board Policy of uh, Disclosure for COT. Good idea. Let's see what they say. 
about board disclosure of CRT is a good policy in my humble opinion. I agree. I agree. Kind of like openness. And plus, the more open things are, the less Satan can lie. Right? Right? The less he can lie. Because the fight is going to be on. Now, I'm going to share something with you guys. I had the, I had the uh, strangest dream anybody could ever have. And it was, uh, it was, it was, uh, a lot of anxiety in this stream. Right? I'm going to give it to you guys. So I'm not, I, I have the interpretation. I do. I'm sure that uh, many of you are going to come up with the interpretation. It's going to take some thought, but you'll eventually see it. Anything spiritually given like that, like a dream, you'll also be able to see it too. If I if I say it, you'll be able to see it. And this was 100% spiritual, uh, but you'll be able to see it. And discern exactly what it means. All right. But I'm going to give it to you so you guys can see if you get this. I was in this. It was a huge, it was like a college, right? But everybody was inside. And on the inside, everybody did everything. Nobody went outside. Everything was on the inside. Uh, the rooms, malls where people shopped. Entertainment where they played, everything was on the inside. The building was like a super building. And then all of a sudden, people began to go outside because the weather changed and the sun came up. So everybody started to go outside. It was incredibly fresh and beautiful outside. After walking around for a little while, because I was among the people, you know, I didn't know what was going on. I noticed. A lion was roaring, right? People started, uh, at first, they weren't afraid. Just, you know, doing their thing and walking, they weren't afraid. And uh, the lion got closer. This thing was big. It was a big lion. He got closer. And, uh, you know, I'm looking around at the people. Are these people going to get out of here or what? And they were just walking around normal. And then all of a sudden, that lion got closer. And it looked right at me in my direction. And it roared. And so I looked at that lion and it was missing its front right, front left paw. It was gone. Right there at the, uh, you know, right there at the elbow it was gone. And it had a wound on its shoulder. So it was a wounded, looked like a wounded lion. But this thing was huge. And I was thinking to myself, okay, I got to get out of here. And so do these people. They need to get out of here. This thing is but they weren't afraid. And then as it continued to roar, I thought it was going towards us, right? I thought it was coming to us and people were just going about their business outside. But I saw an elephant. And I saw another elephant. And this lion was evidently after those elephants. And so one of the elephants, it had tripped it up. It was a scuffle. It had tripped it up or something. And the people were seeing this, and it bit the head of the elephant and killed it. That elephant was gone. And the whole head of the elephant, right? The lion put the whole head of the elephant in its mouth. This lion was huge. At that point, as soon as it bit the elephant, the people scuffled back into the building. They went right back into the building again. And that was the end of that. Now I'm going to mention one part. This, this, this lion was wounded. Was wounded. In the front left, Paul was missing. It had a wound on its shoulder. But it was after those elephants. The people. Those buildings were like sanctuary to those people. What they had built. I'm not going to give the full interpretation, but I'll tell you this. Those buildings represent what man built. Man takes comfort in what he built in life, naturally, right? They do their best to construct things for specific reasons. And they take comfort in their own, you know, protective measures. In this case, all 
all of a sudden, man left his protective measures, began to walk, venture outside. And it was beautiful out there, right? And people were very, uh, they were very social, not mechanic like they were inside the buildings, but very social. When the lion was seen that had the wound on its shoulder, its front left paw was gone. It was just gone, right there below the elbow. It caused a bit of anxiety, but the people, all the people were not frightened. It was noticeable. All the people were not frightened. I believe that lion is the church. I do. I believe it's, I don't believe that lion was evil at all. It scared the it scared me to pieces, right? Because it was so big. But it wasn't after people. It was almost like it was trying to get the attention of the people. I believe that represents, spiritually, the church. These elephants that were walking around, the people were not afraid, not, you know, not anything, until it bit the head of the elephant. Somehow the people had security in the elephant's. When it took down the one elephant, that's when they began, they ran right back into their comfort zone. Again, what they had built, right? They couldn't venture out any further. They couldn't do anything. They were, it's like they were pushed back inside the building by the threat of this lion, right? Because a lion was destroying the elephants. Now we all know in politics, what the symbols are, right? I couldn't help but to think of that symbol in this dream. Couldn't help but to think of it. You guys can figure the rest out. But that lion was formidable, but it was wounded. Very wounded. I would have bit the head of the elephant. They took uh, great pains to go back into what they built. But they did venture out for a little while. That fight between the lion and the elephants must have been going on for a long time. A very long time. Well, now you have it. Now you have it. That was one of the weirdest, scariest. It was incredibly scary. That lion was formidable and scary. Formidable and scary. The people, by the way, their behavior seemed to be defined based on where they were. When they were in the buildings, they acted in accordance with everything they designed. When they were outside, they were like children, free. They were. They were free. The lion seemed to be, it was formidable. It was wounded. But it was not something you wanted to toy with, right? And it was scary because it did not, it didn't really speak or anything. Not at all, but it took down, started to take down those elephants and the people ran back inside. I just want to share that with you. I wasn't thinking of anything prior to this dream and it's still, it's weird. This dream is weird. But now you guys have it. Right? You have it. You may not be able to do anything with that dream for a long time, but now you have it. I can almost guarantee you will, by yourselves, revisit that dream. Dreams not forecasts, by the way. That one was spiritual. It was. Very spiritual. Very spiritual. Somebody says, well, oh, I thought somebody had a question on me. All right, guys, so you have that dream. Keep that dream. Uh, the full meaning of that dream, that there is probably additional meaning. I believe that is going to be likened to certain events that we'll have, possibly. I wouldn't go, I, would, I wouldn't determine anything by that dream. Though. That was spiritual. If, there, if that lion was the church, the elephants, don't let that throw you off in politics, right? Because a long time ago, Elephants. Well, that stood for something. Now it's elephants and mules, right? Elephants and donkeys, but a long time ago it was not. So don't let that throw you off.
But the one thing that stands out to me is this. Man takes comfort and indeed is imprisoned by what he has built. They imprison themselves purposely because of safety. They feel safe in what they have built. They cannot venture beyond what they have built. When they do venture beyond what they have built, there's always going to be a tug of war, new elements to interpret. <laughs> new elements. And when they encounter those new elements, all too often, due to fear or due to not being able to control it, they'll go back to what they can control. In time. In time. In time, you'll see it. Sometimes, when somebody has a dream, right? You can't make sense of it until events start to happen. You cannot do that, right? If, if you keep it, good. But you can't make sense of it until certain things come to pass. In the Bible, they call that sealing up the knowledge. Sealing up the knowledge. And when it's sealed, it's not going to make sense until the Holy Spirit gives the people what certain elements are, like the book of Daniel. Have you guys read some of the older interpretations of the book of Daniel? They were totally and utterly wrong. They were. Some of the greatest minds attempted to discern the book of Daniel. And every date they had was wrong. Every date. Some had multiple dates. Some had sure outcomes to what they believed would take place and they were wrong. Even the outcomes were wrong. But when things, as time continued to go forward, and the elements were introduced, then people were able to start to see elements of it. Right? Only as time continued. The book of Daniel, by the way, says, that is meant for those who will be at the end. Who will be at the end. So that book was sealed until it was start to take place. And nobody has, well, most people have failed in their interpretation of it. I know it can seem fascinating sometimes. I know it can. But uh, uh, listen, that dream I had, if it reveals one thing, one part of it, is that man surely takes comfort in what they build. That also gives me great caution. So my mind, even now, all too often, man will construct every aspect of his environment. Every aspect. And then they'll teach people the rules of the environment they built themselves. New kid, a lot of kids were in there, right? And they learned the ways of that environment. A society made by humanity, governed by humanity, designed by humanity, but it was all gray on the inside. There was no color on the inside. It was all gray. A set of, you know, a format that people followed day in and day out. Day in and day out. Outside, when they went outside what they had built, they could not control it. That can induce anxiety when you see things you don't understand. Right? It's like your house. If a storm comes, would you have better comfort in your front yard or in the house? When the, when the winter comes, would you have a better time inside or outside in the snow, day in and day out, or in your house? Obviously, you'd go inside your controlled environment. You can control the temperature. You can control, right, if you're going to get wet or not which brings a sense of comfort. In that dream, they took that sense of comfort and lost absolute freedom with it because they're always going to miss that element of life. They can create kingdoms, create environments, right? They can create rules. They can emulate things. But the one thing they cannot give, 
is life of spirit. They can't do that. They try. They've even tried to emulate that. Do you guys know that? When they have people get excited like a pep rally, you give a pep rally. That is supposed to be a life of spirit ritual. Do you guys know that? A pep rally is very old. You get people excited, emotional, emotionally excited behind the causes, behind whatever you're doing. And it's supposed to give, you know, that, that life of spirit to that particular thing. In Rome, they named it that life of spirit. They got that from Egypt, I believe. Life of spirit. When you excite people emotionally about things, it's a purpose and very old ritual. Right? You get people excited about things. You say it in a way where they can see the promise of it and they then you have life of spirit behind it. When that happens, that's when people become loyal. Right? But you're dealing with things that mankind built. Now when mankind ventures outside of and it was it was funny thing, the real church is not within anything man built but indeed is in God's creation now they may be a little battered here and there, but that's okay they're still upright you may have a limb missing here, a wound here but it's okay they're still functional right, they can still perform their task correct Indoors, it seemed like they were safe. But the trade-off was not having life. People slowly dying and being entertained to ignore death. Right? A false sense of happiness, a false sense of freedom. Because they're inside of a, of a constructed place of which they cannot escape. Oh, and by the way, no one would let anybody outside. No one would. And that's something. But people, they were going through the motions every single day. But no one was able to go outside. No one. In the moment the sun came up, the weather changed, the sun came up, they let everybody go outside. And for a moment, people were alive again. The people who argued inside the building didn't argue outside. The fights that were inside that building they were not found outside. I know for a fact in that dream there were prisoners inside the buildings, but they didn't even act like prisoners outside. They were totally different. And the church was in that domain. But as soon as the elephants were being killed by that wounded lion, right, they all scurried back to their protective places. To the place they built. All of them did. It's almost like instead of. Understanding creation. Right? Most. Seem to want to control it. And if they can't control it. They're threatened by it. And if threatened by it. They have to retreat. Back to a place. Of safety. And this was in the hearts. Because I certainly felt it. Right? Every time I have a dream, it's almost like a swap bodies every few seconds. You can feel the experience through this person, that person, that person. And in every single case, the building provided security. There was no other thought than, I don't want to die. That was the thought. I don't want to die. So what drove them to go back into their buildings, into that place of comfort they built, afraid of death. They're terribly afraid of death. I mean, absolutely afraid of death. Absolutely. It made me think, no one of the church is in that domain. Because to them, there is no death. And if you're walking around in God's creation and there is no death, you can absolutely see the creation. But the moment you fear death, you're going to seek shelter. You're going to go back into what mankind has built and you're going to start to deal with what they have made in a very lifeless situation. It was almost like they didn't understand that they're dead inside those buildings. They have no life and they didn't care. They emulated all that stuff. They didn't care. 
They didn't care. Well, to me, it reveals quite a bit. I just want to share that with you guys. I did. And again, as soon as they, as soon as that lion bit the head of the elephant, I mean the whole head of the elephant, it retreated back into the buildings. They did. Okay, folks. Now, I'm going to take on the schedule, it did say a couple of questions, right? And we have that covered with the, uh, with the, with our page. We're going to go up there with. And the KD files, let me tell you guys something about the KD files. Since it is Saturday, it's kind of wacky Saturday, right? KD stands for knowledge drop. And again, the purpose of the KD files is to not really talk, but just to write. To write you guys about some things. So let me give you something factual here. Many of you live in live a very protected life, and you should be very thankful for that. You're not exposed to what you could be exposed to. All right. My advice to anybody would be in this time. Be thankful. Just be thankful. All right. But there's a war happening right now. A real war, not man's war. No, another war. A very old war, right? And let's 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 um, let's say for for a moment that everything in Genesis six is real. I believe it is. But let's just say everything in Genesis six is real. That we do have factions of Nephilim all throughout the earth. And we've had them all throughout the earth. Right? Why did they fall in the first place? Why did they come in the first place? Do you guys know why? That can be found in the book of Enoch. Yes, they saw the daughters of uh, men that they were fair. Right? Right? They took unto themselves wives. Right? But what does that mean? Do you guys know what that means? They saw that the daughters of men were fair, and they took unto themselves wives. And those women produced giants. That was one. Men are now. That was two. Mighty men. Three. Right? Giants, men of renown, and mighty men. Enoch tasted a bit further, and it's even in, in the Bible that they not only corrupted humanity, but they also corrupted creation. Not only did they produce giants from human beings, but they produced giants from animals. And it grieved God that he made man, and the entire all of his creation was corrupted. That's missed a lot of times about the fallen angels. That not only was God grieved that he made man, but his creation was in turmoil, right? Because they corrupted creation. Fallen angels did. That means animals. They corrupted animals, right? They corrupted everything they could corrupt, it seems. And when you look at Jasher and the book of Enoch, and please be led by the Lord to go into those books, but when you look at those books, it goes into detail as to what they were doing. It does. Somebody says dinosaur, that's exactly what I believe. I, I believe that about dinosaurs because I'm, you know, my career just messed me up, it did it messed me up pretty bad so I can't go back to normal there is no normal for me and you can't prove too much in the realm of uh, mystique but the way the average person believes history I do not in the way the average person looks at creation I do not I don't carbon dating for example is a farce carbon dating is highly flawed in every case, 
new carbon dating. They come up with a multitude of dates. Some as far in the future as 30 million years in the future. So when you carbon date something, you can come up with a date that says 300,000 years old, 12 years old, or 300 million years in the future, or 30 million years, or 3,000 years, right? Most of the mammoth specimens that they have found, when they carbon dated various portions of the mammoth, they came up with dates that were all over the place. Most of the dinosaur bones, if not all of them, same thing happens. The tip may be 300 million years old. The center may be 3,000 years old, right? The, 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 uh, uh, the forward part of that bone may be 30,000 years in the future. You can't trust that. Now, so what are they doing? They fill in the blanks like this. They give it their best academic estimate. Which means they're going to follow the theory of evolution. And they do indeed calcul calculate things based off the theory of evolution. Right? So when they say carbon dating, in fact, they have thrown that out. And bought somebody in that knows uh, everything Darwin wrote. And they give it a date based on that theory. That's why they cling to that theory, because everything is dated by that. Why is carbon dating so flawed, right? And why do you not have, if, if fossils, by the way, fossils, most people don't know or have not seen giraffe fossils. Have you guys ever seen a giraffe, a, a fossil of a giraffe? Hmm. Have you guys ever seen a fossil of a giraffe, a fossil of a kangaroo? You ever see that? You would think you would find fossils all over the world, right? Right? You, you may see seashell fossils all over the world, but you do not have dinosaur bones all over the world. Why? All you have to do is look at how the bones are shaped when they dig them up. Those dinosaurs were crushed. They were smashed. They were. How do we know that? Because, believe it or not, they have modern-day deer fossils. They have modern-day uh, dog fossils. How so, you may ask? Mount St. Helens. That's how. When Mount St. Helens happened, it caused a mudslide. Lots of water was over top. And it caused, it, it just, you know, buried animals, living animals in there. But when you know it, they fossilized in less than, less than, I believe it was 10 years, 10 or 11 years, they fossilized. They taught us in school that it takes millions of years, right, for fossils to form. Isn't that right? But at Mount St. Helens, it took 11 years. So... But they really didn't, they published their findings. But they really didn't distribute the findings. And so a lot of people don't know that. They're still stuck with the ancient uh, theories. So in truth, it takes about 11 years to create a fossil. Well, even saying that, right, doesn't it kind of not sit right with you because it throws the entire education, educational system and these historic things, it kind of throws it out the window. That's not very comfortable. It'll break your comfort kind of like that dream, doesn't it? Right? Everything man built provides a, a, a almost like programmed comfort for everybody in it. They won't suffer any of that comfort to be shattered. They won't. And it's a place they'll always run back to because they can control it. But when you say something like that, like carbon dating is all messed up, okay, that we have modern day fossils, it throws most of their stuff out of the window. And when it throws their stuff out the window of what they build, it can upset your comfort zone. Right? It can really upset your comfort zone.
Somebody said they're finding dinosaur bones with tissue. Yes, they are. They've been finding those. Yeah. Yeah. Especially some of the frozen ones. Full specimens. I mean, full specimens. They look nothing like we thought they would look like. They were either covered with hair, or they were covered with feathers and hair, or they were covered with just feathers. So, so, given the carbon dating with the Nephilim, right? Because they created, they corrupted everything. Dinosaurs are very odd. If the flood created the dinosaur bones, instead of these other events that people bring up, wouldn't there be human remains around the same dinosaur bones? In fact, there are. They don't publish that either. See, they can't explain why you would find giant human bones next to a dinosaur. In fact, in fact, in truth, uh, some of the people who who are allowed to handle that truth, they state that everything was giant back in those days. Human beings and these dinosaurs, right, were like common day dogs to the humans that lived back then. Isn't that something? They also did surgeries and put prosthetics on the dinosaurs. They found that too. They won't show you that, right? Who cut the dinosaur bones perfectly? Who stitched, you know, certain certain pieces of skin of the dinosaurs when they were wounded? Whose foot can be right beside a T-Rex? Where do they continue to find libraries on how to train these dinosaurs? Why is it thought that dinosaurs had speech. See, that's a weird world, right? It's weird. It's a weird world. Why? Because you're in a controlled society. What you learn is controlled. How you interpret is controlled. And hardly anybody has freedom. And anything that truly is in creation that does not fit their controlled educational system is going to be suppressed and has been suppressed. So some subjects are useless to talk about because people are not used to them, right? In Genesis 6, it says there were Nephilim before the flood and also after that. And if they were after that time, you think they really just died off? You think they just allow themselves to, you know, go into oblivion? Historically, we've been dealing with Nephilim for a long time. By rumor, more are waking up now than they ever have been, but Daniel tells us something that's almost undeniable. About them mingling their seed with the seed of men, how they would not cleave one to another. We're just an intimate part of this system. It's been a very real thing. People suffer by those things. They have footage, lots of footage, catching these things in the act. They're not what you think they are. Like if a person sees a craft, that's incomplete. Right? Where does it go? Where do these things go? Well, in most cases, most people describe who have seen the whole process. These craft will shrink. They'll go down to a pinpoint of light and go and wink out. That's what they see. Now, a lot of people, they love that word portal. I do not. I don't. The fallen angels were made eternal. Time is not going to govern them like it does us. Certainly, they're going to be able to operate outside the confines of time. All right? They will. Time means nothing to them. It was rumored also, this is in the KD files, that if you could look inside of the smallest craft, you would see the largest environment you had ever seen in your life. If you look inside the largest craft, you'd see the smallest environment 
you've ever seen in your life. Can you imagine going uh, going to get in somebody's car? They have a two seater. You go to sit down, and when you actually shut the door, you find yourself in a stadium. And then you scoot over a little bit, open the door again, get out, and it's a little tiny little car. It's kind of like that. Okay? Also, the grotesqueness of what these things are, the reality of what these things are, I don't believe they should ever disclose. Because these things, you know, it would be okay if somebody manufactured them, like a Vimana or something like that. No. You're talking about something that is living tissue. Something that's in pain, totally controlled. Imagine yourselves, right? Somebody surgically removing your mouth. Surgically removing your ears. And your eyes. So that you can only react to stimuli. You'd be in pain. You'd be miserable. You'd have all the emotions. But you would only be able to respond to stimuli. So you would be in bondage your entire life. In servitude. To do what? Right? To exercise your gifts and talents by force. That's the part they won't share. That story is not what you think. This UFO story is not what you think. Man has made it glamorous and interesting. It is not glamorous and interesting, nor is it friendly. It's wrong. Very wrong. And they exploit God's creation to continue. And when man is finally exposed to that, they're not going to know what overtook them. Man makes just about everything romantic. Is what man does. They make it fun. Be careful of that. Because everything to mankind in these kingdoms is almost like entertainment. Something formulated for consumption. Be careful with that. This UFO thing is horrific. It is extremely horrific. And anybody who knows the truth of it is not going to be a normal person. They just won't be. Somebody said, Mike, in the past you mentioned the seven conferences. I have not heard you. No, no, I haven't mentioned that yet. It'll pop up again, though. just not yet. You have a lot of people desiring to see UFOs, don't you? So, wait a minute. Let me let me share this with you. So, if a person desired to see a demonic entity, would that demonic entity come? I think that folks who play with Ouija boards have rituals and ceremonies. That's precisely what they're doing. They're asking to see, to consult a principality, a power, some sort of spiritual wickedness, right? Man romanticizes these things and is trying to name them something friendly so that no one is afraid of the consequences. But essentially, that's what mankind does. Now, these fallen have been in operation for a long time. Now they're in the form of UFOs, and it seduces mankind. Now that it is a harmless, understandable subject that's been totally put together by people, right? The, in fact, the UFO subject that you guys are familiar with has been put together by people who know nothing about UFOs. It's a bunch of theories smashed together that have lasted for a few years that people now believe. It's kind of like spirits. Have you ever heard? And it, this gets to me when I hear a person say, well, you know, spirits require energy. Now, let's pause right there. Let's pause. How would any person know that? You know, some of these folks act like they were born and raised in the spiritual realm. And then in their adult years, they came over to this realm to live life. Like they know everything about the spiritual realm. They don't know anything about it. 
They theorize and speak it as though it's truth. And they can't even see the obvious because they believe what they have created. I'm going to refer back to that dream again. Here we have another case of man taking refuge in what he has built unto himself. Trusting in what he built. You know, the Lord says, lean not unto your own understanding. Well, if we are to lean not unto our own understanding, I'll rephrase it. Lean not unto human understanding. Uh oh, there we go. Don't lean towards human understanding, but we do that every single day. Every day. Lean not unto your own understanding. We're human beings. So if the Lord said, lean not unto your own understanding, then what we understand we are not to depend on. That's why things are not working out. He already told us the consequences of it, yet we can't even see that small little tiny phrase. That small scripture. We don't want that. Most people interpret that as to don't come up with your own ideas, this, that, and the other. No. Humanity has come up with everything. Right? They theorize about everything, and we're not to lean onto that. But the problem with us is we do. We do. That's why I don't like the vocabulary of mankind mixing with the word of God. Right? I don't like that. Just don't like it. So when these papers actually come out, they're going to be offensive to a lot of people who trust in the safety of what man has built. They're going to be highly offensive. Somebody said, KD is never coming. You don't have to read them. They'll come out at the right time for the right folks according to the Lord's time. I wouldn't use them as a source of entertainment because they will offend you. They will offend you. Some people think they want to know about things and I'm telling you right now, you probably don't because I'm not mincing words in those things. Now, what are the KD files, by the way? These are experienced documents, you could say. They will not align with the stories you've heard. Some people will more than likely, most likely come forward and corroborate. But only those people who have hands on. Because it will not, it's not going to answer your questions it's going to give you a narrative you probably don't want to hear it's not going to make a subject easy either it's based off hands on experience not theory somebody says can't access the KDs get an account with COT you can go in there and see it you can go in there and see the page where they'll all pop up there, right? And every time they post, anybody can get those files who has an account with COT. But I'll tell you again, you are not. You probably won't like them. Many will not agree with them. Many will not. Because it will directly fight against Darwin's theory of evolution, the Big Bang, all those different theories that you've heard about. Right? It's going to fight against it. I don't use terminology like dimensions. That's a man-made term. I don't use those terms. Have you noticed? I stay away from those terms. Because again, right? Wouldn't that be us leaning on what man has built? I know we have a language, right? But we have to be careful not to live our lives after theory and not to turn our life experience into some entertaining thing. We're passers-by. This is not our home. Everything the Lord does, he does for the high purpose of our deliverance. Do you know that? 
we should do no less. So the KD files, the, the major purpose of the KD files, wouldn't it be for deliverance? Absolutely. And deliverance cannot be based off theory. If it's not the truth, it will hold no, it's not going to help anybody in any way. It'll just be entertainment. Theory is entertainment. It is. And most scientific theories are proven wrong every single year and they come out with another theory. The Lord does everything with a high purpose. And whatever he did, it helps deliver us. And he gave us the truth. Right? So don't we have a responsibility to give our truth? We do. And anybody out there who is a partaker of that truth, they're going to absolutely cling to it. They'll see it. I know some who will be relieved by it. Hmm. Somebody said, maybe you'll bring them softly into your talks. No, can't do that. I can't do that. It'd be nice, but I can't do that. The foundation of those subjects are so diluted in the world. They really are. So diluted in the world. Just make sure you can access the KD Files page. If you can't access the KD Files page, then you don't have an account with COT. As soon as you sign up with an account with COT, you go right there. Right? Um, but anybody can look at those things once they're posted. Right? Once they're posted. But again, I do ask you, don't share them. Don't share them. Those are going to be controversial papers. Don't share them. Don't support them. Right? Just gain what you can gain from them. But they will not agree with these foundations that people have laid out everywhere, and they're going to cause a stink, a big stink. There you go. Somebody said facts are 10% theory is 90% of all out there. And of the 10% facts that are out there, 0% is truth because facts are not truth. Truth is truth, not facts. All right. I want to tell you guys that, make you guys aware of that. All right. This is supposed to be a short, tiny little broadcast today because we have dark kingdoms rising. We do. We do. We do. And we do take comfort in those things we built, don't we? We do. And it's hard for us to venture out into God's creation and feel absolutely secure with what God created. Because we do always run back to what man created for safety. That's food for thought. And again with the Nephilim, Daniel lines that out nicely. These guys have never stopped. And they have been using any uncovered human being for what they do. That's why it's good to be covered. If you're uncovered, you can be used. All of you out there, by the way, all of you. Now, this will apply to 80% of you. Before you truthfully believed, I mean, really believed in the Lord, when you were hapless and free, you had an experience. And it took you by surprise. It took you at a time before you committed yourself to Christ. You had an experience. And it made you believe, didn't it? It pushed you in that area of the mystique quickly, didn't it? It pushed you. Do you know that happens for just about every human being? Before a human being believes anything, they'll undergo something that will push them. Most people, they'll say that... Um, before they experienced what they experienced, they honestly thought people were cuckoo and batty. After the experience, they know for a fact we don't know anything. Those are most of the people who have true experiences. They said all the time, we don't know anything. We think we know, but we don't know. And out of those people, some of those people give their life to Christ because they realize something that what the Lord wrote is absolutely real. And there are dangers out there. Dangerous man cannot perceive 
dangers that are ancient and old, dangers that are inescapable, and that no one can fight against. You know, in fact, without Christ, not one of us would defeat them. Not without Christ. They don't fight like we fight. They don't. They do things differently. But you guys have had the experiences. You guys have. So you know the seductive nature of how they are. Many of you have gone even further because these things will make you feel like you're special. Anybody ever have that? You don't have to admit that. But they make you feel like you're special, like you're about to be given something. They cause you to have a desire. To want to unite with them so that you can stand out with those you never stood out with before. That's a setup in life. Causing you to desire them. Desire is a gateway. You are the... If a portal is anywhere on this earth, it's within you. You're the portal. And whatever you desire is going to come. How many times did God tell us that same thing? Whatever you desire, it's going to come. Because when you desire something, it becomes the core of how you live your life. You will always live around your desires. Do you know that? You'll always live around your desires. And whatever you desire, you're going to call it to yourself. And you will go to it. In this case... Because God gave man dominion in the earth. If you have a desire for something esoteric, you're going to call it or give it permission to come through in your life. That's what you'll do. And some people are tormented to this very day from doing that. You guys have heard the romantic stories about these lights in the skies. You've not really heard the tormenting stories. Like the man and the son who were scratched up every single day, even when they were in the hospital. They went to five major hospitals and every single day they'd end up all scratched up from head to toe. Infected scars and everything. And it did not hold whatever it was back from clawing them up the next day. This was every day until they died. And these two individuals were so frightened they would not accept Christ nor even entertain him. They were angry at humanity because, they had, because humanity could not save them from what they were going through. And they would not give their life to Christ. They expressed severe hatred towards Christ. Fourteen years they suffered. Hospitals have some extraordinary stories. Many of them they, they are not allowed to discuss. Though they are documented. People at lost time, yes. Yeah, so, um, I, uh, I had a nephew. A nephew and a friend and a, and a uh, cousin experienced that three days ago. They said they went to a gas station. They saw a guy standing with his legs spread apart about shoulder width, looking. He was standing in the gas station, right, looking towards the road. And he was just standing there. They went in the gas station, filled up, did some stuff, came out. This guy was still standing there. It's about, you know, they filled up their tanks, too. It was two vehicles. That was about five minutes. Just get that five minutes. So they went to the store. They set up the street. When they came back through, 30 minutes later, this guy was still standing in the exact same spot. At this time, at this time, police officers had flashlights on the guy, and he was not responding to the flashlights. He was staying there. Right? What is that all about? But that's happening more and more. Do you guys know that? That thing, whatever's happening to that guy is happening more and more to a lot of people. This guy didn't move an inch. Not one inch. Upon follow-up, because they tried to follow up, the 
police had no such report. No such report. The police had no such report. No such report. Isn't that something? It's happening more and more. Then there's the the, the real physical vanishing of things. Stuff. I believe some of that's a product of what mankind is tampering with because of what they found. I do. I do. Some people were in an office. You know, everybody has security cameras all over the place, and this phenomenon is being caught in, in many different places. But, you know, when you're in an office and you toss somebody a pencil or a pen or, or something of that nature, right? Well, they keep, they keep having these uh, incidences where one would toss something to the other and everybody in the room would be in shock because the item would no longer be there. It never reached its destination. One guy handed another guy a cup of coffee and the coffee cup was gone. Just gone. Sayonara. I believe that's a consequence, right, of what man is doing by way of his desire. Demons are tricksters, magicians, tricksters. They are the tricksters, right? They do a lot of things to seduce humanity, to get them interested in things. They'll go the extra mile to cause a person to believe in esoteric things, in spiritual things and everything else prior to them giving their life to Christ. Now, isn't it amazing that when you give your life to Christ, all that activity alters? When you really do give your life to Christ, when you accept Jesus Christ at the cross and you agree with this gospel, everything changes. You can accept Christ and go through the motions. They can still mess with you. Until you agree with the gospel and receive the sacrifice of Christ, you've just gone through motions yourself. So what I'm telling you is that you can go through the motions of giving your life to Christ and you can be in danger because you did not accept that sacrifice upon yourselves. You guys who know that, right? To accept what Christ did is to acknowledge your own sins, your own evil path in life, to acknowledge your position opposite the Father's, right? And then when you do that, the last thing you're going to be worried about is darkness, and you're going to be forever thankful about the cross. You're going to have a moment in life, and when that takes place, you become filled with a different spirit. And when that takes place, nothing can penetrate. Nothing can ever come back and do what they did again. Nothing can. See, a lot of people, they can go through the motions and it looks like they received Christ. I'm telling you right now, because there are so many people out there right now that say they're Christians, but they do not agree with the gospel. They don't agree with the words of the living God or of Christ. They don't. Those who accept Christ are known as the keeper of the commandments. You can only keep the commandments if you reside within Christ. And the only way anybody can reside within Christ is if they have repented of their sins and accepted the free gift of salvation by accepting the sacrifice of Christ for their lives, for that sin in their lives. That's the only way. There are lots of people out here do, who do not agree with this gospel. They can title themselves all they want. I do not go by titles. That's why I don't have a title. I'm not going to have a title. Because it's useless. Pointless. And the real consequences are coming. And the world's not going to be the place you thought it was. It's just not. For some, it's going to be very upsetting. The outcome, everybody is, uh, have you guys noticed that you always hope for a specific outcome and you don't get it? Anybody notice that? You don't get it. 
most of the Christians I talk to, they'll admit, yeah, I was looking for one outcome and I did not get that outcome. I didn't get it. I'll tell you something, though. Those who know what repentance is, right? Repenting is not saying I'm sorry. That's not repentance. Repentance is when a person can see their own iniquity and they refuse to enter back into that iniquity again. That's when you have repented from something. You're the one that refuses to go back to that thing. Listen to me, though. So long as you like it, you're going to go back to it. So if you like something you know you're not supposed to be doing, ask your father to show you the truth of what you're doing. That's how it begins. And then when you see how many people it has destroyed, that's going to help you move away from it. Many people are asking God to take away their desires for certain things. He didn't do it. He's not going to mess with your desires like that. You are, in fact, a Thomas. You operate on your own. It's all your choice. There was a time I asked God to remove my will. I said, take my will away from me. That's asking the same thing, right? I didn't want to. I didn't want to have a desire to do anything against the living God, so I told the living God to remove my will, and he did not. But the moment he showed me what my iniquities were, everything changed. It's not going to change until he shows you what your iniquities are. Then when, it, then when you see what your sin truly is, that's when you say, Lord, I'll never do that again. Please forgive me. And you walk away from it. And Jesus is just to forgive. When those people, right, repent, he is just to forgive. He is. He will forgive it. And at that point, you're cleansed of it. You don't have it anymore. And he will fill you with a different spirit where you will not desire certain things. Right? To have a born-again spirit means you have a whole new set of desires. That's one of the first things I noticed. Having a born-again spirit, you simply don't have the desires you used to have. Your old life becomes truly old. Entertainment is nothing. All right? That was a time I used to, if for everything I felt, I think I listened to a song. You know how when you're young, right? You guys know that. When you're young, you listen to music. Right, that complements what you feel. A born again Christian. When it happened to me, I had no desire to hear any music at all. I didn't want to hear anything that did not lift up the name of the Lord. And some of that Christian music out there, it was the first thing I heard was not even Christian music. It was more like ritual music. I think sometimes people are taken by the beauty of the music. And they overlook the words in that song. Right? That's why I like music without words. I do. I like the melody. Because I can write my own words as it goes on. But I don't have to have it. Before I had that born again spirit, right? Something had to be playing all the time. Any of you like that? You had to have your TV on, radio on, something has to be on. After the born-again spirit, peace. I just don't need that stuff. Nothing external, right? I don't need music to get me excited. I don't need music to get me, you know, going or something like that. I don't need that stuff. No, one thought of what the Messiah did. That's all it takes. That's my secret weapon. Hmm. Somebody say, yes, the music sounds like chanting. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. And keep in mind, it's, if you know the artist, that's one thing. But when, when companies, when certain organizations 
produce these songs. You better believe they're going to make money off the people. They want the songs out there that will alter the people. They want the, the people that you see out there getting paid a lot to do what they do. They only get paid a lot because people want to hear what they have to say, which means people are willing to align their lives based on what they hear. And they pay those people to continue to alter the masses. And when that person is too old, they're no longer effective, they cut them off. They pull them out like a bad tooth and stick somebody else in there. They'll do and pick the people and the songs, which whatever moves the people to, to have a strong desire. That's what you're going to hear. That's what you'll hear. And have you heard some of the new stuff they have today that the kids are listening to? They're absolutely horrific. They are the worst and evil. These things are horrific. They teach people how to live a life of an adulterer and feel good about it. They teach people how to cheat on each other and take no thought of it. If a person is okay cheating, they cannot keep any of God's covenants. You know that? They can't do it. Can't do it. So anyway, anyway, I don't want to go too far in this. I don't, don't want to do that. But those who are saved, nothing can penetrate you. So fear nothing. When you agree with the gospel of Jesus Christ, it does not matter what the world does. It doesn't. It does not. Your Father in heaven will do everything he said he would do. You don't have to worry about anything. I'm going to say something that makes you guys mad. You don't have to worry about vaccines. You don't have to worry about GMO. You don't have to worry about that stuff. You don't. Your father, right, is a working power within you when you belong to Christ. Do you hear me? That means it's not just your body. It's a kingdom body, a kingdom vessel. That's what you don't understand. That's what you may not understand. When you're saved, your body is a kingdom vessel. Do you hear me? Do you think God would allow any evil to prosper inside of a kingdom vessel? Hmm? He has not and will not. He has not and will not. The apostles, right, the apostles, they ended up being martyrs, didn't they? They did. Now, a lot of people, they do mix up the thorn in Paul's flesh, right? But they end up being martyrs. But as far as their health is concerned, during the ministry, God sustained them just enough to get done what they need to get done. That's a blessing. You want to be sustained? Start saying yes to Christ. Whatever he sends you to do, he will empower you to complete. Thank you, Jesus. You will. You know what that means? Health. If the Lord does not assign me to do anything, why would he sustain my health? Because if he did not assign me to do anything, I don't want health. Because all I'm going to do is live a vain life. Think about it. As you walk with the Lord in obedience, you'll be sustained as you walk. Why would anybody want to be sustained? And they truly do love the Lord, but they're not going to do anything for him. Why would a person want to be sustained? I've told people countless times, I do not want to be sustained if I can't serve the kingdom of God. For what good would it be? There's no good in that. There's no good in that. That's just serving the world again. I'm done with the satanic things. I know Satan's tricks, philosophies. His emulated churches. 
seen enough of that. It's kind of like waking up in the morning. You know how people say, oh, thank God I woke up this morning. Somebody told me that one time. They said, uh, "This." I was young, and I heard them say it. They said, oh, I just thank God he woke me up this morning. And I was thinking within myself, did that person really just say that? Now, I'm a, I'm a young guy, too, when I heard this. Because I found that to be very selfish. Why would a person thank God because they woke up? For what reason? No purpose behind it. I would never thank God because I woke up. To do what? To do my sinful things throughout the day? No. But I will thank God that I woke up and he gave me another opportunity to truly serve the kingdom of God again. That's a blessing. Have purpose. Have purpose. Our Father has purpose. Jesus did all things with purpose. The apostles had purpose. And I notice in Scripture, everything God blessed was purposed. I'll never thank God just so I can go and do the things I want to do. That's vanity and disgusting, actually. For me, it would be. Do you know why that would be disgusting for me to thank God just for waking me up? Because I'm held to a different standard. When you start speaking to people about the Lord, you're held to a different standard. What you do and what you don't do, you're authenticating in everybody's eyes. And the Bible says we're going to be judged seven times more harshly than anybody else. That's why the, in, in the word of God, it says, don't be so quick to call yourself a teacher. Just stop doing that. Right? That's what the Bible says. See, at one point you had everybody, they wanted to be the big shot in the church. They did. They wanted to be number numero uno in the church. That's not right. But to seek to be authentic with Christ, that's key. Let the Lord place you where he will. But try not to use his love and grace for vain thing, right? I don't want to thank God for my life so I can go out and go to a party. That, that, how disgusting of a thing would that be? So I can go out and do what I want to do without servitude. No. So that was incomplete. Every day is an opportunity. It truly is. It's also a gift. It's not promised. That's why I have no complaints. Right? People who think somebody owes them something, they have complaints. God doesn't owe me anything. I owe him everything. I can't pay him back. I can only serve you more and more. That's how you serve the Lord, by serving your fellow man. How else can you serve the Lord? That would be of a benefit to everybody else, unless you serve your fellow man. And there it is. Folks, that's honestly all I have for you today. It is. Unless, what time is it, 7? Yeah, that's all I have for you today. Now, tonight could be one of those perfect nights for one of those midnight discussions. It really could be. So if I were you, uh, you know, you don't have to, but I would check back in for that midnight thing tonight. Just to see, just to see, just to see. Until then, I'm going to be working for the admins here to get, get our information in there and see how we're going to do this, how we're going to take this step. I think it'll be a good step, but of course you guys are going to make this decision. That's going to be up to you guys. We're just going to tabulate, but that's going to be up to you guys. All right. 
they'll be able to somebody says, Mike, you're going to have a big fat crowd. You know what? This is all honesty. I'm going to tell you guys something. This for real. I said this back in 80, 87. In 88, I'll say it now. And I truly mean this. If I'm never permitted into the kingdom, then fine. I just want to see everybody else go in. That's my heart's desire. It is. When something like that's your heart's desire, hear me on this. It's not something that should ever be flaunted. It's not something that you, you know, market. But it's something you feel deeply inside. And that's why you never complain about your losses. See, I have a lot of losses in life. I do. And things don't work out sometimes. That's true. But I'm willing. And you don't get the credit for anything. You're not looking for credit for anything. Right? But you'll never complain about it. You ever heard of a silent servant? Anybody ever heard of that? A silent servant? That's a person who does good but never advertises the good they do. Right? So they're never worried when somebody says they don't do anything. Or I remember one time somebody said, well, well, COT is not, uh, they have no fruit. Where's the fruit? That's what they were saying. Where's the fruit? And everybody else was up in arms. And I told him, you guys remember that? And I told you guys, I said, no, 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 no. Never, don't defend that way because Satan will try and get you to provide evidence for everything you're doing. And if you go down that path, you're going to be stuck on that path and you're, you will eventually turn into a vain person. I said, don't do that. Let your good deeds, let your good, do your good deeds in secret. Right? That your father may reward you openly. Now, how is the father going to reward us openly? Openly to who? Not view of people. Well, he can show people. But when he does that, you're going to be used as a vessel to glorify Christ. That's the part people miss. It's, he's not talking about a reward like, the, you know, God's going to give you a bunch of stuff in view of other people. No. Because the main idea here right, is that you ultimately be used to bring Christ glory in the earth. And so he'll do that through you. That means you're going to be spiritually enriched, right? That's what it means. You'll be spiritually enriched. And there's one trade I'll never make. Anybody out there in the world, any of you, if you're ever compromised by this world's things, your well is going to dry up. And what that means is you're going to find yourself having nothing unless you get it from somebody else. And I'm telling you right now, you have access to the water of life. You do. You have access to the water of life. What you must never do is enter into vanities or your spiritual insight, that, that wealth, that wealth of, of, of spiritual life that comes by way of the word is not going to flow. It's going to be stopped up. It's going to be, you know, a cap's going to be put on it, right? To keep that open, do your good deeds in secret that your father may reward you openly, right? Isn't that what the word says? Don't think when you pray, don't go into the, to the, you know, in public and think you're going to be heard for your many words. The Lord said, when you pray, go into your secret place. That's what he said. So he was telling us, that when you do your good deeds, don't advertise. Just do them. You don't have to tell everybody. Everybody does not need evidence that you're doing a good thing. Just do the good thing and let God work out the rest. See how that works? When you pray, let your pray be of such sincerity that you're not doing all this routine stuff to satisfy the ears of everybody but that your prayer be effective, right? That your prayer be effective. And when, when you pray and open with everybody else, this is by the word of God. When you pray with everybody else, if I pray so that you guys can hear, that's so you can decide if you agree or not. That's why. Other than that, I don't need to pray where everybody hears me because I believe the word of God. I do not believe in the popular things done in this world. They have become highly ineffective. A am I the only one 
that can truly tell that many things in this world concerning Christianity have become ineffective when it comes to the popular way of doing things. Hmm? Why are the people still suffering so badly? Why? People are suffering. People who love the Lord are suffering. There's only one way that can ever happen. And the Lord answered that. No one should be suffering that much according to the word of God. And I believe the word of God. I do not believe all this stuff people make up. And if there's no fruit, no fruit of the Lord, then the tree cannot be of the Lord, period. I don't know about you. What good is it for me to do what I'm doing if your lives are not empowered, healed, and you truly are stepping into the kingdom? I'm not doing this for any other reason than for the people to be empowered by the Spirit yet again. That healing come into your lives. That you truly overcome. To me, it's not competition. It's not saying some new clever thing. That's not what this is about. This is about you not suffering the way you were suffering. It's about you having that personal relationship with Christ, that you have his peace again. It's about your victory, not mine. I'm not looking for a victory. I'm looking for your victory. And we go deeper. I have a problem when I don't see it. The problem is not with you. Is that what the word is for? many things have been commercialized. Too many things have been ritualized. Man has added his formula to just about everything. Everything has become a set of steps. And they have snuffed out the Holy Spirit. They refuse to operate by the Holy Spirit as a consequence. The victories aren't there. I'm highly thankful. I am. It is by God's hand only, not mine. But about every month, at least three, 4,000 write in about their victories. Not victories like they have won a million bucks or something like that. No. People are talking about their children coming home. The children that walked off that their women were afraid that would never come back because they did something and it was bad blood between them. It's prepared. Unification is happening. Unification. Homes are finally peaceful again. Where well, the family never did sit down at the dinner table is happening again with the Bible open. That's a miracle, right? To me, that I'm not promised. Nobody, God doesn't have to give anybody an unction to share any story like that. But when they come back and they're the same things, consistent with what I've been praying about, because you guys don't know what I've been praying about. So how could somebody write back based on what I was praying about? Hmm? They can't do that. I'm not, I'm not guaranteed to see those things. But God knows, the Lord knows, I feel useless, but I don't see them. That's a fact. And anybody out there who's teaching, they're going to feel ineffective. Often you're going to feel ineffective and you have to go forward by faith because you don't know what you're doing. And it is scary to handle the Holy Word of God. And you don't know what you just did with it. But when those little emails come back from time to time, that's, a, that's amazing. The Muslim converts people who were 
uh, people who were full of hatred, full of all this, you know, destruction thing. They were able to see Christ and have picked up their Bibles and started their relationship. That's beautiful. That's a beautiful thing. That's been happening a lot here lately. A lot. And just like clockwork, when that happens a lot, so a certain type of assault ramps up. Most of the assaults in COT happen from the inside. Do you guys know that? Never from the outside. It's the way the enemy works. I hold no grudges of whom he may work through in their moment of weakness. But I can tell you this. In the Bible, it states that Jesus is the one that's able to keep us from falling. You know what that means? You don't have to fall. You don't have to. You just need to make sure that you're abiding in Christ. You do that for yourself. That's your personal responsibility as a citizen of the kingdom. So in other words, choose him all the way. Don't choose him and continue to live like the world. Choose him all the way. You want godly results in your life? Live a godly life. Not the life that they do in public, but choose Christ in everything that you do. That's all. Choose him in everything you do. That's all. But if you're trying to get godly results, Applying worldly ideologies to your Christian walk, you're not going to get godly results. Haven't you noticed? A blessing from the Lord does not break down over time. So some have been fooled. A blessing from the Lord is eternal, just like he is. You know that. Anytime you think you've gotten a blessing, somebody said one time, uh, I was blessed with a car. I said, well, are you making payments? They said, yes. I said, well, that's not a blessing. God empowered you, right? He empowered you. But a blessing, a blessing from the Lord, you'll have no regrets over. You're not going to owe no man no money. It's going to align perfectly with his word. God is not going to bless us with something that does not align with his teachings, Correct? He said, oh, no man, no money. Now, if I go out there and buy myself something, that's not a blessing. God simply empowered me, and I chose to buy that thing. It is not a blessing. Do you guys see the difference? A lot of times we go do things for ourselves, and we call it a blessing so that nobody judges what we just bought. Let's tell the truth on that one. If the Lord gives us something, is, is it bum beyond what you even asked for? It is. Remember that. That way we can occupy that truth, right? Because sometimes it's great. We have compensators for ourselves in life. Clever statements and things of that nature that cover for the things that we do. Somebody said, is it wrong to borrow? No. The Lord said, oh, no man, no money. Now, why did he say that? Is it a sin to owe somebody money? No, it is not. These, When he said, oh, no man, no money, he's giving us instruction, which is why even his people had to be delivered over time. They were delivered over time, right? We are delivered over time. Over time. Everything is delivered over time. When you come out of debt, the Lord was advising us. Hey, he, he was telling us how to live our lives. Oh, no man, no money is what he said. Right? Don't enter into any contract with a person. He's, he was telling us to live our lives simply not to tangle ourselves up with the world because he told us when we do this, the world will certainly demand things of us. Right? The Lord teaches us how not to have a tangled up life. 
Do we go get loans, this, that, and the other? Of course we do. You know why? Because we panic. That's why. Because sometimes we don't know. Right? I say, if you went and got a loan and you needed it and it did what it was supposed to do, right? Then tell the Lord you want to be just like he mentions in the word. Let him show you how to be free of all that stuff. In obedience will always find deliverance. Always. Obedience in all areas. I hear a lot of people talk about being debt free. Do you know what? Me and my personal life, I'm debt free in my personal life, right? But even I did something for COT one time. I did. I did. I did that for COT so that COT could continue. So is that a sin? No. You'd be, I'll do anything for the sake of the Lord's word, right? One time I was not going to do it. I was not, we, we, listen, listen, guys. Now, th- now I'm telling you guys, don't start donating on this. Don't do this. I'm just telling you a story because I said this before. One time COT couldn't make it. We weren't going to make it another day. I remember one time I told Angela, I said, Angela said, well, um, is, she, we, we, I was discussing with her what the issue was, and I said, well, look, Angela, I've already prayed for it. That's on the Lord. If it, if it doesn't work, it's on him. I bet just her mouth dropped open. Anyway, guess what happened about a couple hours later? The exact amount came through. It did. Not through a person. No. Came through a totally different way. It was amazing. And we both laughed about it later, right? But that was a lesson, though in that that was with a witness but then another time came another time and i had a decision to make i did and with that decision i said no lord i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna go forward because it was a it was a faith it was a purely a faith thing right a faith thing how many of you Right, would keep would sell every all your personal assets for the sake of an operation that uh, may not be appreciated or may not work at all. Most people would not do that, but in business, people do it all the time. They'll take a risk in business like that to get rich, won't they? But they won't take a risk like that in life so that somebody else can be a benefactor of it, right? And then how it goes, I did that so that people could benefit from it. So that people could utilize some things. It was a big risk. It was. But evidently, the Lord, you know, he was, he was right there again. He's right there again. After a year, after a year, it was continued, right? Listen, when you do something out of love, the Lord is going to be present with it, period. Period. It's going to look like he's not. It's going to look like it will fail. If you do that authentically out of love and you're purposed to do that out of love for somebody else and you do not benefit, your father's going to be right there every single time. He's going to be there. He's going to be there. He'll be there. It was almost like the Lord wanted, wanted to see. He wanted me to see. He wanted me to step into that area of choice. How much of myself would I give for the sake of something? I know I know nothing about the outcome. What am I willing to give to continue in truth? Is that what he asks all of us? Hmm? All of us. Somebody said, Mike, please explain Galatians 5, 3. Well, let's go look at it real quick, real quick. Galatians 5, 3. Galatians 5 through states, For I testify again to every man that is circumcised, that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Well, that's out of context. You've got to read the whole thing. If you read that by itself, you're not going to, 
you're not going to see that in context. You won't see it in context. In Galatians, it's talking about the power of Christ, right? Over the law, surrounding the law, completing the law, satisfying the law, and to be within Christ is to be a law keeper. But you've got to read the whole thing. In fact, you have to read Galatians, th starting at Galatians 3. You have to read Galatians 3 all the way to Galatians 6 to really understand that. I'll, I'll demonstrate something to you now. It's, it starts out, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. It says, behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. And what that means is, if you've been circumcised, right, by the law, in that bondage of the law, Christ will not profit you anything. Because you're not broken. See? See? See how that starts out? Context in the word of God is everything. He continues and says, For I testify again to every man that is circumcised, that he is a debtor to do the whole law. The whole law. Christ has become of no effect unto you. See, you have to read the whole thing. So what is he saying? You know, a lot of people go back to the Old Testament and say, Well, we have to do everything in the law. Right? We have to obey Every aspect of the law, that is the bondage he's talking about. That's why in the Bible it says the law had no power to do specific things, and Christ came, and he did have power to do it. And in Christ, your freedom is not in bondage of keeping every aspect of the law as they did back in the days of old, but to be fully in Christ, that he may be of high effect in your life. See, when you're in Christ, when you're in Christ, is he not your Savior? Is he not your Messiah? Yes, he is. He told us what to do. But people go around what he said, and he was talking to the Pharisees on this, because they keep the law. And they mandated everybody else keep the law. In the steps of the law. That makes Christ of no effect. Because Christ came to fulfill all of it. So if we abide in him, then, we're keepers of all things. It is bondage again to live a life like they did. Because the law contains the statutes, commandments, and judgments. You cannot keep the Ten Commandments and throw away the statutes. You can't do that. You can't. No one is going to keep the law and throw away the statutes. You can't do that. They're the statutes, commandments, and judgments. You cannot follow the law and throw away the rest. Like people say, well, you're not supposed to eat this type of meat and this type of meat. What did Paul say? He can eat anything. It is not what goes in a man that defiles him, but what comes out. He was speaking by the Holy Spirit. Meaning what? Here we have an emphasis again on what comes out of your mouth and on being in Christ. Christ died. His blood covers everything, and in him we stand. We cannot stand in the law. We are crushed, doomed, guilty, kaput. Christ is the last sacrifice. There's no other sacrifice. There is only Christ. So if one is not in Christ, then the sacrifice does not stand for them. And if they do one thing wrong, either in thought or in physical form, they're doomed. To break one of the laws is to break them all. In thought or doom, the Bible says, if you look upon a woman with lust in your heart, you have committed fornication. So you don't have to go through with the act to be a breaker of the law. If you so much as think about it, you're doomed. So in the law, you're dead. You're doomed. You're done for. And these guys were propping themselves up saying, well, we keep the law. If Christ is the last sacrifice, no one can make a sacrifice for sins, which means no one under the law can be forgiven of any sin. So they, therefore, are kaput because Christ is the last sacrifice. See that? Good question, by the way. Hmm? That's what that's talking about. So, so again, you have to read Galatians chapter 3 through six to get all of that in context.
Context is critical. When you're reading the Word of God, to pull out one scripture and to use it is a no-no. That's a no-no. That's a big no-no. Because people will make that mean anything that supports what they're talking about. And that's out of context. When I read scripture in context, this word crucifies my flesh every single time. The sacrifice of Christ. And it edifies. It edifies Christ Jesus. It's number one in my life. It conveys the love of the Father and will cause no disappointment in one's life. When you have that in context, you can absolutely be free. When you have it out of context, that's pure manipulation in most cases. And it's not the truth. And then people become powerless. Powerless. Someone said, Mike, I have my grandson circumcised following the Jewish heritage and tradition. But no, I'm sorry I did it. Jesus, my Lord, save your friend. No, don't be sorry you did that. Listen, don't be sorry you did that. If we knew, I'm going to say it again. If any of us, right, or first of all, if you want to do something after Jewish tradition, right, that's your right. That's your right. If you wanted to align yourself with the Lord, that's not some bad thing. That's a good thing. So then good for you. Good for you. Because you desired to be pleasing unto the Most High. Then good for you. Good for you, right? It's not mandated, but good for you because you desired to align your family with the Lord. So good for you. Don't ever be sorry for that. Good for you, right? Now, anybody who, it, it, it people nitpick at specific things. They do. They nitpick at specific things. But when you desire to do good unto the Lord, whenever you adopt, then good for you. Good for you. Right? The assurance is to make sure that you reside within Christ. Have a fullness in your life. But don't apologize. Because in the days before you knew the absolutes, you did something to be pleasing unto the Most High. No, that was a, that was a pure work. That's nothing against you to do that. What are you? No. Nothing is against anybody who does a pure work. And that's a pure work. Period. So good for you. Good for you. Hmm? Somebody said, Mike, I love you as a brother. Just got diagnosed with PSP. Thanks to you and our Lord. I get through it. God bless you. Well, I hope that we continue to be of help. And I hope that the Lord is your healing, my dear. Hope the Lord is your healing. I'm convinced. Our Father is going to do a, uh, a work of works among you guys. Mike was Texas where Noah built the ark. He had a giant couple of trees and there was two trees. Well, I can't answer that. You know why? Because there's so many inaccuracies with historical things. For example, suppose east was west and west was east back in the day. If somebody picks up a map and they're looking at a place, it could be in a totally, you know, opposite place. That's possible. It's possible. So I normally don't, I, I can't sit here and tell you, yep, that's where it was or that's where it was not. I can't do that. I am not confident in the history that's given to me. I'm not confident in the knowledge that's been accumulated over time, right? In order for a person to say no or yes means they are confident with man-given history. I'm not confident with man-given history. I'm not. I'm, I'm not. I'm not confident with that. So I can't answer that. I can't. I can tell you I trust the Word of God. I can tell you that. But I'm not confident with the history that man gives. I'm not. So I can't answer that one, right? Because Texas is only Texas. Um, even its location is discerned by men. And there are too many nefarious things happening. Too many. Too many. Somebody said, Mike, I nitpicked on Jewish tradition. 
Uh, I think we we all did things like that. Tom, listen. Here, here's here's sin itself. Here's the truth. This is why we can all be forgiven, right? In in, in truth, we never knew the true weight of sin. We never knew the true penalty of sin. We never knew it. As you get older in the Lord, things become more serious, right? You become sober. Then you say, Lord, forgive me. I said, I did so and so. Forgive me for that. That's when you realize the nature of your sin, right? That's when you realize it. That means prior to that time, you did not realize it. And Jesus is just to forgive. That means you sinned in ignorance. Ignorance is not knowing. And you really didn't know. Right? Because if people knew, they wouldn't do it. If we knew, we would not do it. None of us would. Thus, we can be forgiven. Right? We can be forgiven. Because in truth, we did what we did in ignorance. We didn't know. We just didn't know. Hmm? So uh, don't be it. It's a, it. The Lord has you on that. He has you on that. And no one can dethrone Christ. No one. So that means repentance, right, is real. That's what that means. So I said, Mike, please share a, hey, please share a, hey, with knowledge of God, you started serving the adversary. Restate that. I didn't quite pick that up. I think I know what you're saying, but I want to be clear about that. I want to be clear about that. Yeah, and somebody said there's a piece called Lost Pine in Austin. The piece of ground is actually from East Texas land. This movie does. It does. And there's a sign from one of Noah's sons in Mexico. Mexico is a landing area, a known landing area among a pretty big community of those who hold real artifacts. And Mexico was a landing spot for one of Noah's sons. Isn't that interesting? Actually, it's expected. But uh, that's something that hardly anybody knows, right? Except that big community. It's a huge community that knows that. Where's the moon that is spoken of in Genesis? And Enoch and the God gave light at night since one we see isn't what we think. That is the one. God made, listen listen to the language, God made two great lights, right? One to rule the day, one to rule the night. The question is, Mike, where's the moon that is spoken of in Genesis and Enoch that God made to give light at night since the one we see isn't what we think? We don't, if God made the moon, right? If God made the moon to look like a starfish and over time it got covered by dust, it doesn't mean we're not looking at the moon, right? That's not what that means. God made the Garden of Eden, didn't he? God made the earth and the oceans and certain fishes and everything else and some of the species that existed back then don't exist right now. Certain land masses that were flourishing back then are not flourishing now. They're dry. Things alter over time, right? God still made them. And when the moon is uncovered, no one will ever doubt that again, that God made what he made. Hmm? No one will doubt that again. The nature of these planets that you were taught, right, they can afford to teach you because it's the most probable thing you can come up with without further evidence. And so you believe the academic story of what you're taught with men. What if back in the times of old, the moon did not look like it looks right now? What if it was silver? What if it had little knobs on it or something, you know, something that looked like architecture more than a moon? What if that's what they understood to be the moon? And over time, all that was lost and it changed. They would still refer to it as a moon, right? They wouldn't be fascinated by the architecture on the moon because it would be normal to them. Or right now, it's normal to us for things to be covered up. Massive cities on the earth are covered up by sands. The moon is no different. 
which is why you will always hear about structures on the moon. One day, you'll see it again. One day, you'll see it. And that will be that. Someone says, Mike, did the rabbis just give Trump a crown meant for the Messiah? Well, if they did, they can't be rabbis. How about that? That means they're playing being rabbis. I will call them imposters. If anybody ever did something like to give man anything like that, that's an imposter. So, men in costumes. It's like, you know what, that's, that statement is like saying this, right? I'm explaining something, by the way. It's not a smart aleck remark or anything. But would any of you call a pastor a pastor if he were the main customer at a bar every day, drinking strong drink? If he called himself a pastor, is that what he would be? No, that's what he calls himself. Right? If he wore the clothing, can you be a pastor? No, he's just wearing the clothing. Right? So a pastor by definition is not what a man would call himself. It's what God would assign him to be. A rabbi is the same thing. If God assigns someone to be a rabbi, then they're a rabbi. If man calls himself a rabbi, how can he be a rabbi? He can call himself every name in the book. That doesn't make him what he calls himself, right? Especially when it comes to those things dealing with the most high. People can give themselves titles all day. It does not make them what they have titled themselves. We are what the Lord has given us to be. And it's important that we find what the Lord has given us to be. It is with what you said about the compass being all messed up, how do we know that north and south are in the Bible when they are mentioned? We don't. You can you can you don't. You can only you can only look at everything you can look at, right? And attempt to determine that, but in truth you don't. You just don't know. You don't know. We don't know. And that's why I have no confidence in certain question answering certain questions, because the truth is you don't know. It's like the, the, the radioactive bones that people found, right? They know that's solar radiation. They know it is. But in India, it is not solar radiation. It's a different type of radiation from a bomb a long time ago. So, but the truth is you don't really know. When I have no confidence in, in these historical things, right, I really can't comfortably go forward with a conversation in that specific subject because I do not have confidence because too many lies have been exposed to me over time, over my career. I've seen too many contradictions and outright ploys that people have used on the masses. So, uh, no, I can't draw up on man's knowledge or biblical truth like that. I can't. I can't do it. I, I don't have confidence like a lot of people do, right? I told you I'm spoiled in that way. I've seen behind the door, the curtain. So I just can't, you know, I can't answer that. Other people may have great confidence in that. I do not. I do not. I don't. I have no confidence in that. So we're here with the phone lines and make sure that's going well. So, and we'll have to do that right before the broadcast because one of the two of us are probably forget something, get a button push wrong and mess up the whole thing. So we have to get that set up right before the broadcast. Because between both of us, right, we have half a brain. Don't tell her that. 
That's, that's my uh, synopsis there. My synopsis. Angel was the first person, the first person in COT that, uh, that I could say was a friend of COT. as the first person. Interesting story a long time ago. Interesting story. It's amazing how decent things have maintained themselves and absolute and pure decency. Of course, most people would be absolutely bored with with uh, any interaction we have. They would. They would. Is there really a room called Alice in Wonderland? Yep. Yeah, there is. There is. Folks, that's it. Sorry. Oh, oh, somebody said the American in totem pole resembles the Indian God culture stuff. Plus, oh, totem poles. Anyway. Folks, God bless each of you. I did say over the time, but it's okay. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. AM 777. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Fight that good fight of faith. You will be victorious. You will. Somebody says two hours later, short, yeah. Every time I say I'm not going to be on long, I end up going long. And every time I say, hey, guys, we got all night, it ends up being short. And that, that's, that's the Lord for you. That's the Lord for you. That's how things work, huh? So things work. Folks, listen, uh, I may join you all at midnight, so check back in just to see, just to see. And admins, I'm going to get you guys squared away so we can get those answers back. Okay. Tomorrow's Sunday, right? Tomorrow's Sunday. So Sunday, um, I'll do that Sunday. I think I'm going to put everything up there Sunday so you guys can have an answer back to us by Monday. Okay. Is that okay with you guys? I'll make sure the links, the two email links, three email links are up there by uh, Sunday. Right, and work something else out so that you guys can get everything back to us by from somewhere between Sunday and Monday, and we can go ahead and make a decision. All right, it is a standard. Now, guys, understand this: it is a standard. So, if we put it up there, it's going to be up there for a very long time. All right, it will be a standard. It is unorthodox. I don't think that anybody else does that, do they? Do you guys know of any other place that does that? So if we do it, nobody else does. Um, we had to be careful where we put it. it the one thing we don't want to do is to do anything that makes any other organization out there look like they're not doing something. Will not be used as a tool against anybody who would preach the gospel. That's not going to happen. Okay, so we, by optics, you know, in the Bible, when it says we have to abstain from all appearances of evil, well, we have to do the same thing collectively. We cannot appear to be one way as though we're the only one doing so-and-so, right? That's nothing for anybody to brag about or anything else. That's just simply insights into COT, that's all. For those who join COT, they need to know all about it, right? That's all that's for. That's not for competition or anything else. It's not what that's for. So keep all that in mind as you're making your uh, decision. All right? Keep all that in mind because we don't want to ever reflect on any other ministry and, and degrade them. doesn't matter if they love us or hate us. We don't want to degrade them. Okay? We don't want to do that. Folks, I'm going to see you guys next time right here at COT. God bless you. And, and again, you may, you may hear from me at midnight. But uh, just check back in to see. Check back in to see. I can't give you an absolute yes or an absolute no. So just if you're awake, check back in to see. If you're not awake, don't worry. It'll be recorded. You won't miss anything. It'll be recorded. God bless you all. Listen, thank you for your time again. God bless and keep all of you always.